So, uh, Jelen, I'll uh, I'll transfer hosting to you. Okay, so we're live. Five, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good afternoon, Philippines. Good afternoon, Indonesia. Good afternoon, Southeast Asia. And wherever you are right now, this is your Feministang Filipino, Shaira Cruz. Welcome welcome to episode 4 of Everyday Feminism. Joining me once again in our is our kachikahan from Indonesia, Ika Agustina. Ika? Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, selamat siang. Uh, it's nice to see you again in our serial discussion. Everyday Feminism. So, uh, a brief reminder for those who have just joined us in this uh, fourth episode about what Everyday Feminism is. So, uh, Everyday Feminism is a series of discussion organized by Kaliana Mitra Indonesia, uh, Women's Legal and Human Rights Bureau Philippines, and Voice to amplify the stories and experience of women and girls. So, and also uh, to build uh, a cross-country feminist solidarity in Southeast Asia regarding how they live as feminists. Through this program, uh, we want to introduce the way of life uh, by applying feminist value in every behavior and action in our personal and daily life. So we have six episodes and today is episode four. So after this, we still have two other episodes. So WLB uh, from the Philippines and Kalyana Mitra Indonesia are part of the we Weaving Women's Voices in Southeast Asia or WEAVE, uh, which is a regional group of women's organization and advocates working at the national level in six ASEAN countries, such as, of course, Indonesia, Philippines, Brunei, Myanmar, uh, Thailand, and Cambodia. Uh, so yeah, WEAVE is advocating for women's rights issues in both national and regional levels in Southeast Asia. Uh, so going back to everyday feminism, in our previous episodes, we've talked about relationships, social circles and friendships, and families, and uh, how we're applying as feminists, how we're applying our feminist principles in, this, in these spheres. And while our topics have always varied greatly for, from one another, each episode truly fosters great conversations that we rarely ever have the space to talk about as feminists and as women. We say that everyday feminism is a safe space for women to share their experiences. And I think, Ika, that the sharings we've heard over the uh, last few episodes or the last few weeks are evidence enough that we have created um, a safe space out of this. Yeah, that's true, Shahira. And on our work, we know how important safe space are by adding uh, it, it's essential to talk and further explore what we mean yeah. by safe space. For you, Shahira, what is a safe space? Yeah, so um, in a previous episode, I think um, in our episode about relationships and social circles, uh, I said that I consider my inner circle of friends as my safe space because uh, with them, I can just be. I can share my thoughts and feelings knowing that um, someone is listening to me or no one is judging me. I can laugh and cry or be angry. I can be drunk with them without any judgment. And most importantly, I know that with them, uh, no harm will come to me so or come my way. So I guess uh, that for me is a safe space. Um, so how about you, Ika? What's a safe space for you? Yeah, I think the point is quite similar to yours. Uh, safe space for me is like a place. Uh, it's like an environment. Uh, where I can feel safe and comfortable to express myself uh, without being afraid of any harm. So in my private sphere, I think a family and my close friend become my safe space because uh, I feel comfortable sharing many things with them. And at the same time, they are also an important support group uh, mm. in my life. So however, I think uh, calling them as my safe space uh, didn't just happen suddenly. Because I think uh, what I experience, it takes a long effort and also a process to create that safe space. So there is an 
import uh, like uh, to trust each other and also build awareness and mutual respect and so on and also how uh, to take uh, of this space so it can be a long lasting safe space so i think uh, that's a safe space for me in my private sphere so uh, and also i think shahira safe space uh, in the public sphere is also important right yeah. so yeah. i guess we will also talk about it uh, with our guest today in this episode right Yes, of course. Thank you, Ika. So, um, I hope that we gave you um, uh, an overview of what we'll be talking about. So, today here on Everyday Feminism, we'll be exploring the meaning and significance of safe spaces with more feminists from Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Philippines. And to help us better explore the stories that will be shared here today, let's welcome a special co-host, also from the Women's Legal and Human Rights Bureau, Zelen Paklarin. Hello. Hi, Hello, Hi, Shara. Hi, Shara. Hello, everyone. Hello to our viewers. And thank you for inviting me as your guest co-host for today. Along with Shara and Ika, we will help in unpacking the meaning of safe spaces to our guests and its translation to the everyday lives of our guests. Moreover, we also want to know what is the importance of having a safe space for these feminist leaders. So I'm already I'm already looking forward to the uh, sharing uh, of our four guest speakers for today. Yeah, glad to have you with us today, Jalen. Yeah, now uh, let's get to know our guests. So first of all, welcome to the guests and thank you for joining us today for sharing. And uh, maybe for the introduction. Uh, what we know here, what we will not hear from uh, our guests at first are pretty basic. So uh, please introduce yourself, uh, including your age, if you don't mind, uh, and also a little background uh, of yours. Uh, maybe you can share a little bit about your work and what do you do to have fun. So uh, to start us off, uh, let's call on our guest from Brunei, Nurjuni Abdullah. Hello, Judy. Hi, Ika. Hello, so good Judy. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to be one of the panel of speakers in this event today. Um, yeah, so introduce yourself, including my age. Are you really serious? You want to know my age? But um, okay, once again, my name is Nur Judy Abdullah. I'm 53 years old, and I have um, two children. The um, eldest is 23 years old, and my youngest is 20 years old. So I have quite big children already grown up. And um, what do I do for work? I do um, actually conduct uh, management training programs for the Civil Service Institute here in Brunei Jerusalem. And I also conduct um, several training programs with uh, private companies and uh, some small and medium enterprises uh, inside Brunei. I also get uh, to be invited as one of the trainers for some projects outside Brunei. And um, now with the uh, current situation wherein everything has been migrated online, uh, we had been very busy conducting a lot of webinars uh, to a lot of our clients, which are, are either inside or outside Brunei Jerusalem. So what do we do for fun? Um, thankfully here in Brunei, um, at this point in time, we have not had any local transmission of the uh, COVID-19. Uh, since May 2020. So we had been living life normally, although we still uh, make sure that we are, um, you know, practicing safety precautions. So I, we still continue to do what we think is fun for us. Um, I have a group of um, friends of ladies where we always meet together to have coffee and do some catching up. So we call ourselves like the ladies of leisure and we, we <laughs> talk about new books, we talk about uh, fashion, we talk about current events, we talk about anything that matters to our lives. So that sharing session is really quite enriching and it's quite grounding. And uh, it reminds us that we are really human beings, that we have also challenges um, in our lives. And it's good to share with friends who we eat, share and laugh at the same time. That, that, that's how um, we do things here in Brunei. Thanks, Ika. 
Thank you, Judy. So um, I have, I I'm getting the message that my internet connection is unstable, but I hope it holds off. And yes. um, let's call on our second guest from Indonesia, uh, Mira Diarsi. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Yes, you are. Mira Diarsi, not Myra. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, sending you love from Samara. It's uh, in central Java. Uh, there's so many rain in here, although uh, during daytime, it's very, very hot. So that's why you can see my <laughs> openly. Okay, I'm Mira Diasi, 61 years old. So hi, Judith, you are still my junior. Yes. <laughs> okay, and I'm single. Um, uh, been working, uh, been active and... In this move, 84, that's uh, when I started. And then uh, now the last eight years, I've been uh, assisting the governor of Central Java uh, to do and to deal with the development issues regarding health and education. Uh, that's how I work, but still uh, mentoring and coaching for the younger uh, families in their 20s and their 30s. I'm still their love mother. <laughs> for them and we do we do meet uh, regularly is that Mira's inter I think it's Mira's internet this time so um we can get back to Mira later uh, while we're waiting for her. Um, let's call on our next guest, uh, Ruthra Ram Ramachadran from Malaysia. Hi, Ruthra. Hello, everyone. Thank Hi. you for uh, inviting me. I'm really glad and honored to share this space with all this amazing panelist here. My name is Ruthra Mary Ramachandran. I'm from Malaysia. I've been a refugee activist uh, working in the nonprofit sector for the past two and a half years. I'm aged 23, which means I'm still studying my, pursuing my bachelor's degree at University Malaya, Malaysia. And uh, I'm currently running my own NGO, which is called as um, Samya, which helps to, uh, which helps refugees uh, across the world. We are currently working with and for refugee women and girls and also young people, refugee young people in Malaysia and Bangladesh, Cox's Bazaar. So um, yeah, that's how uh, my background is and where I'm working from. And I'm also glad that I'm uh, now has been appointed as the Asia Pacific thematic focal point for migration under major group for youth and children. And uh, apart from my work in academics, the thing that I like to do is whenever I have my free time, I like to binge watch Netflix. Netflix is my only first time. So I love to do that as much as I have my free time. So uh, that's how, yeah, that's all from me. Over to you, uh, Shaira. Thank you, Ruthra. Uh, what's your favorite Netflix show or what's the most recent one you've watched? Oh, Just the recent one uh, I watch is, uh, I really love this inspiring uh, story. So I did watch uh, Self-Made. Self-Made. Uh, it was really inspiring. I'll try to uh, watch that. Sure, you have to. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ruthra. So um, Ika, you, you want to introduce our next uh, guest from the Philippines? Yeah, I think... I think Mbak Mira is back, so maybe Mbak Mira oh, okay. can continue. Mbak Mira? Hello? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. 
I uh, to introduce myself. Uh, I will. I prefer to see uh, with 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 the aging. Now I prefer to see more in the different side, meaning uh, positively, constructively, not as hot as when I was twenties. <laughs> That's uh, we we'll talk about it later. Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you, Mbak Mira. Is it okay if I call you Mbak Mira? <laughs> It's okay, fine, fine. Okay, okay. For for thank others, you. Mbak meaning sisters, yeah. Sisters, uh, yeah. To, to call the uh, older, we uh, we do not uh, use to just call names, but with uh, Mbak or maybe Bu uh, for other things. But we uh, all. Feminist activists would prefer to be called Mba as it reflects the young. <laughs> the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mbak Mira. So our next guest, uh, last but not least, uh, from Philippines, Chang Jordan. Please. Hi. Chang. Thank you, Ika. Magandang hapon. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, 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 I'm uh, Chang, um, but uh, officially, uh, um, you can see me in the email as uh, Cherise Jordan. So it's quite uh, uh, American or foreign sounding, but I'm Filipino. And um, I'm, I'm working with the United Nations uh, Women or UN Women and, and um, handling the Ending Violence Against Women uh, portfolio. And I used to also handle the Safe Cities Metro Manila program, which is actually uh, very aligned with what um, our episode will be covering, which is about safe spaces for women and girls. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chang. So, wow, Sahira, it is exciting to have such an amazing and diverse guest today. Surely, we will have an interesting discussion with diverse perspectives, stories, and experience. Now, I think that we have some idea who are uh, speaking with today. So let's get on with the question and answer portion. Yeah. So uh, please, Sorry, Sorry I'm, I'm 39 years old. Oh, you are not finished yet. Sorry. Yeah. I, thought, I, thought, I thought I could uh, get away with that. But yes, I'm 39 old and what i do for fun is um just you know be a be a be a slave to my one dog and two cats so uh, yes i i'm the human slave so that's what i do for fun back to you again Nika. okay thank you, thank you Cheng. okay so please sahira yeah so uh thank you to our guests and um We were, were taking notes for what you do for, for fun so we can also um try those things out Uh, when it's our off time. So, um, of course, as we get to know each other, uh, we're also looking forward to our next parts of our episode, to episode today. So, um, before we get into our discussion or our Q&A session, uh, for those who are watching us, so we would just want to uh, mention a trigger warning here because since we will be talking about safe spaces and as Much as we try to keep our discussions here light and fun, um, there's of course um, the other side of the of the coin that uh, or our reality as women and even as feminists. So um, yeah, let's tread lightly. Or if you're watching this, um, we hope that it can be educational for you as it is useful. Um, yeah, so let's get on with it. And since we are talking of safe spaces, um, just as Ika and myself have asked each other earlier, um, how do we define safe spaces? Or what is your definition of a safe space or safe spaces? So for this part of the discussion, let's go ask, um, um, I will also call her Mba. Um, is that right? <laughs> Mba Mira. Right. What is your definition of safe space? All right, Shaira, my dear sister. Dick Shaira, that's how I call you back. If you call me Mba, I call you Dick. <laughs> it's the younger sister. All right. Uh, especially for women, uh, uh, safe space is uh, it's where women can live their lives uh, to fully human beings. Uh, that's that. That's a very uh, general terms, in whatever uh, condition, yeah. And it means uh, to be free, free of what, 
free of threat, free of uh, afraid or um, uh, being scared of something. And uh, of course, they they can be trusty, uh, trust, trustworthy, and respect is needed in the uh, safe space. It's not given. Uh, then space, safe, safe space is not given uh, because of the cultural, social, and economical uh, context. Then that that's why we have to really fight for our safe space. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Mbak Mira. So um, we're taking on uh, we're taking some uh, keywords from Mba Mira's um, definition of safe spaces, uh, where women can live our lives and um, fully as human beings, where we're free from any threats of violence and threat. Oh yeah, threats of violence and humiliation and um, given not earned. So we'll see how um, if the perspective or the ex um, what's this the, the definition is shared among uh, the guests or uh, it will if it will vary from guest to guest. So uh, next can we ask um, Ruthra to uh, share how do you define safe spaces Ruthra? Thank you for the question uh, Shaira. Um, you know, we have this general term that the safe space is an idea which says that a social space could be any kind of uh, space, formal or informal, where groups or individuals um, can feel physically and emotionally um, safe. So uh, for many people, this, social, uh, this safe space could be a, a physical space. However, uh, for me, uh, for this uh, new generation, for me, this idea differs a little. I'm a social activist, a community mm -hmm. management officer for a local NGO, and also a university student who lives in hostel away from home. Mm -hmm. So of my profession, I have to meet like, uh, and engage with many people of various backgrounds who are mostly strangers to me. I have to visit, you know, residential areas or office where I literally don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll have the company of my colleagues or friends and sometimes I don't. So on the other hand, in a hostel away from home, I used to commute, you know, public transports to travel back and forth to campus. I used to live with strangers as my roommate. So I'm explaining all this experience because I hardly feel or have a particular physical space where I could confine myself safely. Mm -hmm. So finding a physical space was, was really challenging uh, for me. So I knew that I can't rely on external factors to always align. So I have like a typical roommates, landladies, and even with my working colleagues. Mm -hmm. So um, And also I have always a strong will. So if I feel injustice, I cannot hold back and I will um, you know, always strive to always speak the truth. So this is also not always received everywhere. So since I knew that we can't control the external physical condition, we, I, I started to learn that, you know, we have to create a safe space, a safe harbor within ourselves wherever we are. So since I started realizing this, I stopped yearning for a safe space outside and I started finding a safe space inside me, no matter wherever I am. I work. So I started doing things which interest me, like, like binging into Netflix to keep my mind, body happy. And also I'll do activities which keeps it healthy and most importantly, strong and resilient. So whenever anything that compromises my personal safety or tranquility happens, uh, my body and mind, you know, starts to work in a way it could respond to that triggering in an effective manner. But I should say that having myself as a most safe space, you know, helped me to become a stronger person, a uh, better decision maker. However, I also want to highlight the fact that even um, if you have yourself as a safe space, it doesn't mean that you should not rely on anybody else or favor from outside. So finding in a safe space does not happen just by doing uh, things that interest you, but um, it also needs you know environment of positive people and um, reliable advisors who could assist you in your decision making and carry out constructive communication. So I would say that um, finding uh, in a safe space is not Easy as it seems, it requires a lot of efforts and mental strengths and reliable networks and experts 
where you could always go for help. But if you succeed in finding that, yeah, you'll be feeling, you know, uh, you, you, you will start feeling very confident about yourself. You start loving yourself and you become very independent. So that's how the whole concept of space space works for me. Thank you, Ruthra. So that's interesting, um, finding a safe space within ourselves. So uh, maybe we can try, I, I, I'll I try that later. Um, <laughs> so for now, let's call on our uh, third speaker. So uh, Chang, what? how do you define a safe space for you, Chang? Yes, we have what we call um, among feminists, the per so uh, I would say that um, safety for me would mean that um, I feel a safe within my personal space as well as um, in all spaces, whether public or um, private. So uh, I have, uh, ex uh, there's a trigger warning at the start because I also have to tell my story. I am a survivor of sexual assault, and it was um, a group of men who actually, uh, who are the perpetrators, and it was at the time where I was working part-time during college. So I was young, and um, uh, I was trying to support myself uh, to, to continue with my education. So I trusted uh, my uh, colleagues at work, but um, they violated my personal space and they violated me. So, uh, but I think that uh, safety is not only uh, the burden of uh, the woman or the girl, it's everyone's responsibility. It's every bystander's responsibility. It's the responsibility of the government of all sectors to make sure that all women and girls, also um, all people with different, uh, gender expression, non-binary, or those who feel different, feel safe at any time or any place, um, wherever they are. Thank you, Chang. So um, thank you for sharing uh, that very personal experience or that very personal story. And um, we all know that it must not be easy, not just to uh, recall, but to go through that kind of experience. So um, if anyone is... Uh, to everyone who is watching us right now, if you have any experience or shared experience that you are willing to share, um, we're here. We uh, we can we will listen to you, and uh, you can join us here or uh, comment on Facebook. So uh, once again, thank you, Chang, for that sharing. So uh, later on, maybe we will be exploring more of those stories or sur surfacing the more of those stories. So um, for now, we. Uh, let's call on our uh, fourth guest, uh, Judy. Uh, how would you define safe space or safe spaces? Thanks, Shira. Um, very simply, um, it is um, a common definition that others might be uh, sharing, but this is what I believe, that uh, it is a place where women and girls can express themselves fully and comfortably without fear of being bullied, judged, discriminated, abused, harm or even traumatized. So it is a space for women and girls to network with each other, share and learn experiences, even find a mentor and access relevant information and even seek legal advice. So it is a space where women and girls help hold the ladder and push each other up in the ladder. So that's simply how I would define safe space. Thank you, Judy. Short and straight to the point. So, um... Coming from all the responses from our guests, um, it's either uh, it's all of it na that we're finding safe space within ourselves because um, we can't find it anywhere else or it's hard to find or hard to earn outside of ourselves or outside of our private spheres. It's um, fear, freedom from being threatened of any violence or humiliation. And um, it's not just on us the, to find that safe space or... Uh, sustain that safe space for women and girls. So um, I'm sure that for the rest of the discussion today, it's going to be uh, even even more interesting. And I hope that our viewers uh, on Facebook um, are, or whoever's joining us right now uh, can learn from our uh, discussion today. So 
uh, let's just read some comments or shout outs from Facebook. So there, Athena uh, Lopez from F from Facebook. She's watching even though it's uh, raining in the province. So it's really uh, it's actually um the rainy season here in the Philippines. So thank you, Tina and um. Nikki Jurisprudencia from uh, also from Facebook, uh, watching with her daughters. Hello, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope this is a you um this is a good discussion for all those who are watching. Uh, Raylin de la Paz, hello, Rosel. Um, uh, they are saying hello to Chang, Jelen, and Rutra. Raylin. Okay, so thank you. Um. Okay, so. Yeah, uh, I I <laughs> I will, I read through Ika's part. Sorry. Uh, okay, so proceeding to segment two. Um, now that we've defined what safe spaces are for us, we've kind of learned some some points from each other, some things about each other. Um, proceeding on to segment two, taking back our space or taking back your space. So just to share or just to start off this segment. Uh, here in WLB, since Jelen and I are here, we always say to each other that uh, WLB is a safe space for women and girls. And personally, I've um, I've experienced how safe of a space it is. So when I'm going through something, I can come here, I can uh, talk, and I know someone will listen, give me advice when I need it. Um, so it's for all of us here in WLB. So before we get back to our guests, uh, I want to ask Jelen, uh, why is it important for us to have a space or a safe space like this, like we have in WLB? Um, I think a safe space, safe space is very important because very important because it's a space for us to grow, to learn, and learn, uh, be discursive or be uh, enter into a discourse discourse without privileging other over another. So you can talk anything. You, know? you can talk anything like sexuality. About your, as you've said, nga, personal lives, as, as Shang mentioned, personal is political, uh, as mentioned earlier, free from threat. You can wear anything you want, no, a dress no, that you are more comfortable with, with that you're not being judged. No? Uh, and as mentioned by earlier by our guest, unfortunately, safe spaces is not always available. No? And in some cases, this is something that feminists need to demand in formal and informal spaces, no? even sometimes in our own home. We even have to claim and demand it, no. And I think this is important. I think this is this is the reason why we have to discuss it because sometimes we don't uh, recognize the value also of having a safe space, even in our own homes. Uh, yeah, but uh, okay. So thank you, Jalen. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to proceed to our next question for. For our guests, again, once again, um, since we define safe spaces and such, um, I think though it was touched upon earlier by your responses, uh, why is having a safe space important, not just for you or for you uh, initially, but also for women and for girls? So, um, and in in those instances where safe spaces are not always available, as you've said, um, they're hard earned or sometimes they're not even uh, available all the time. Uh, what can we do or what did you do to take back the safe space that was um taken away from you? So this time, uh, let's start with uh Rutra. So just to uh clarify or review the question, uh, why is it? Why are having safe spaces important for you, for women, and for girls? And in the instances where the safe space is not available, uh, what did you do to take it back? Again, thank you so much for the question, Shaira. Uh, I wanted to start this question with, uh, with sharing my story where I found that uh, my safe space was intruded. Uh, so there's a point of time I found my safe space was intruded that happened when I went abroad for a few months uh, and I went alone. So that was a country completely different from my culture, language, and people that I'm used with. And this was the first time for me to spend a very long time away from my family, from my country. I didn't speak or understand 
pronounced in a single word of that country, whereas English was not the main language spoken. To add on, I again end up with a problematic roommate, and it was equally hard for me to find, you know, uh, friends over there due to the differences that we share. And this point of time, um, you know, I couldn't find a safe space outside, it's evident, whereas the worst is I couldn't find my usual inner safe space as well, because I was not mentally prepared uh, to adapt to this new environment while I was going through a lot of homesick. So, this is also outside, however, I stayed strong and I tried to, you know, take back my safe space. Luckily, I was able to find um, reliable psychosocial support service providers who introduced to me, uh, introduced me to a bunch of amazing colleagues who now become a very close friends of mine. So having this support service and surrounded by positive people helps me to gain confidence and adapt to the new environment and also find my inner uh, space again. So while I'm saying this, uh, coming back to the second part of your question, why safe space is, in, uh, is very important. I think this experience has really made me to realize the hardships um, gone through by um, you know, displaced communities. They were forcibly displaced from their um, home and they had to flee overnight to another country or another place. They are being separated from their family. They landed up in a country where they doesn't know anybody. They don't speak their language. They are a complete stranger to everyone. And the worst of all is they have to also face the brunt of you know, hate speech and discrimination in everywhere they go especially for the uh, forcibly displaced uh, communities I'm talking about. So uh, since they, my, my situation was uh, very much similar to theirs, just that I'm not a refugee, but they are. So they are, even, they are going through an even worse situation than I am because they are not just landed on a country where they are not familiar with. They are not only facing those shocks from there, but they are also being traumatized by the violence of armed conflicts that are happening in their country. So I think this is where I realized that how important safe space is for someone who is new, who's strange to a place and who really needs support. Uh, that's when I decided to start my own organization, Samia, where I started to work on, you know, on, on refugees' well-being especially focusing on gender equality on, on, on women's, refugee women's, and how to create a safe space for them. So uh, to, to conclude with safe space is very, very much important for, um, for everybody, for, for women's especially, since um, you know, it helps them to not only get the support they want, it helps them to create networks, to get friends, and it also helps them to um, prevent themselves from um, violence that's happening around them, get the information that's needed, and most importantly, to build back the confidence they, that they might have lost uh, to, you know, to foresee the future, to walk uh, strongly towards establishing a good future for them. So in my case, yeah, this is how it happens, and this is why I found that safe space is very much in important, especially inclusive space space, is very much important to have a wider reach of, of targeted people. Yeah. That's all. Hello? Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, yeah, my internet is uh, kind of uh, unstable right now, mm -hmm. but um, I really love how I'm just going, uh, what's that? I'm recalling, Ruthra, how you said earlier that you create safe, safe space within you. And I think that uh, that's translating to your work in Samia, that you're creating safe spaces within women or within displaced women to um, help them have that safe space that's hard to earn. So uh, thank you for sharing that, Ruthra. Um, so Jalen and Ika, if you have any uh, anything you want to say, um, not just to Ruthra, but to all our panelists or our guests, um, uh, please feel free. And also to our, um, uh, participants who are joining us today, whether on Facebook, Facebook or on here on Zoom, uh, you can comment, 
at any time or share at any time and we'll read through them. Okay, so um, the same question goes, of course, for our um, next guest. Uh, let's call Judy. So Judy, just to refresh your mind, uh, why is having a safe space important for you, for women, and for girls? And um, in those instances where safe spaces are not always available, uh, what did you do to take it back? Thank you, Shira. Um, before I answer that, I think I need to answer one question here, which has there been an instance where in your safe space was intruded upon? So I'd like to share um, two viewpoints that I have on this, wherein I had an instance where in some meetings sometimes where majority are male and you try to express yourself but one or two of them would ask you to lie low on your opinion as female opinions are not relevant in the discussion. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, I will just take a deep breath and I'll continue to speak because the reason being is I'm part of this meeting. I need to be a part of this discussion, you know? So I, I don't, you know, buckle up, you know? So I keep on moving, you know, as long as I, I say, uh, this is my right and I need to have my space and this is my time. And another viewpoint that I'd like really to share to all our viewers is that when you talk about intrusion in your space, it is not only thinking of male people intruding in your space, but also other female, our own gender, other women and, and girls who also are perpetrators of harassment you know, among us women. So I think that is an area that we need to look into because um, um, I have had several observations and experience uh, being put down by, by women themselves, you know? So maybe we just don't share the same vision at that time. So why having safe space is important for you or for women or for girls? That's your question, right? So safe spaces are important as you want to feel supported, respected, and accepted. And of course, creativity can only flourish in a safe space. So when you feel safe, that's the only time we're in, you know, you're relaxed and your mind will be working and a lot of creative um, things can be um, discovered, shared, and built upon. And you can be yourself and not be burdened in wearing different masks to fit other people's opinion. Mm -hmm. That is really, really important. And you can be you, and you do not need to explain yourself to anyone. So this is really something close to my heart. I really want to be in a safe space where I can be me, you know, and, and I don't need to fit in your description. And I always remember this, and I hear this from time to time, but I always put this in my mind, that we do not need to compare, compete, or conform. You know, so how did I take back this space? You know what I did? I just founded or, or created my own not-for-profit organization called Project Women and Girls Development, or also called Project Women Brunei. So I'm the executive director there. And um, it is a safe space that I would like to share with other women and girls who believe in the same vision and mission of this organization. So I set my own rules in the safe space, which was collectively agreed by other women and girls. And these rules are about respect, support, accept the unique nature of each woman and girl and protect each other. And um, our project Women Brunei is focusing now on the indigenous community, women and girls, the indigenous community, uh, women and girls of uh, migrant workers in Brunei and women and girls with disabilities because we believe this is the really the minority group that needs safe spaces. Um, I think that's all for now. Thanks, Shara. Thank you, Judy. So I love, uh, I love the buzzwords that came from Judy. Um, the no need to compare, compete, and conform. And of course, the, um, the slogan, if, if that's right, the slogan of Project Women Brunei of respecting, supporting, accepting, and protecting each other or um, girls protecting each other. But also the um, let's go back to um, what you shared about um, how we call it, mansplaining. Uh, several women from Philippine communities or we've worked with here in the Philippines have shared that 
uh, even though they're part of this organization, they're given the time and space, but uh, in the end of the meeting, their um, voices were taken out of the document. So, or personal experience that uh, people are pressuring you that to cut your speech short because um, it's taking too much time. But um, when a man is speaking, um, they're not, uh, objecting to anything so I think um, that has I've shared it here with WLB that that has traumatized me and in some way that it made me afraid of speaking because someone will uh, make cut me off once again so I'm still trying to work on that but um, I hope that more women will uh, or more men will um, uh, refrain from doing that and taking our space in those um, kind of meetings and uh, assemblies. So, um, Jalen and Ika, you have... Yeah, I, I think what I got from Judy's uh, sharing is that um, there are tendencies sometimes even among um, female no, uh, workers or even uh, those who shared spaces with us to also create, no, reproduce um, cultures that... Uh, lean towards patriarchal beliefs and values. And I think that's the challenge. And I think that's something that we have to be careful of. You know, as feminists, as, as workers, as development workers, as activists, that we also have to be um, careful and be wary that we might be reproducing values that instead of creating a safer space for younger generation or for our fellow feminists, we are actually reproducing values that will eventually uh, traumatize them or push mm -hmm. them no? not to be part of our um, circles and rather similar to what Judy, what happened to Judy and similar to what happened to, with, with Rutra. No? It's, it's also difficult if you're in a very, uh, in a foreign country and you don't know what to do, where to go, who to be with. Uh, I think those are actually realities that sometimes we, realities that should be um, realities for us, but uh, we are hoping that eventually in the long run, it's, it's not something that we don't need to ask for. It's already available. So I think that's my take on the sharing of our two panelists. Back to you, Ika and Shaira. Okay, thank you, Jalen. So um, Ika, if uh, you have any, any comments? Uh, no, Shahira. So maybe we, uh, let's move to uh, yeah. the third guest. Maybe a chang, please share about. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Why is having a safe space is important for you, and also, uh, where is the safe space or uh, not always available? What did we do to check the bag? Yes. Um, I can only. There's only one uh, statement on my mind um, to answer this question. Um, why is having a safe space important? Because it's the only way we can live. It's the only way. It's like breathing. If we are not safe, we, how, what kind of life do we live in? What kind of world are we existing in? So having a safe space is something that is... Um, it's like breathing. Uh, every woman and girl uh, should feel safe, should be able to live uh, freely without any fear. Uh, it's important because um, if we don't feel safe, we will not be able to uh, do even uh, the basic things like uh, if within our homes, we don't feel safe at all then um, we will not be able to really uh, be free or uh, have that um, sense of um, uh, personhood. Like it's, it's, not, it's not like, you know, uh, where it's, in, it's, it's part of being human. Um, yes, I have a number of instances. Um, that's why I... Um, I usually all, I'm trying to uh, also uh, tell my stories more and more um, because for me, it's also part of breaking the stigma and breaking the shame. 
um, I, there's always a, a striking message about why do I, do I have to bear the shame if I was the one who experienced um, the violation or, or if I was if I were in a very unsafe um, situation. So uh, it's a way also for me to fight back, to reclaim my safety, to reclaim my safe space. And I owe it to myself uh, to really make sure that I don't blame myself. So for those instances that uh, I don't feel uh, where a safe space is not available, I try as much as I can to be a friend to myself, to tell myself that it's okay, it's not your fault, and there will always be a way uh, to find your way out of a very unsafe um, situation. So that's um, that's my answer, Ika. Thank you. Go for Chang. Thank you, Chang. Okay, so uh, the next guest, uh, please, uh, Mbak Mira. Okay, girls, uh, bear with me. Uh, I will continue all stories that has been uh, spoken out with two different uh, sphere of why space space is very important to women. First thing, uh, as I told you before, I now work also with uh, women with disability in in the remote areas in East Central Java, so in a small town. I will tell you one story. It, it happened uh, last month. There is one uh, uh, of my friends. Uh, she's, she's still young. I mean, 32. And she has two kids. She uh, has problem with her leg. So she's in a three-cycle motorbike. Right, uh, wherever she goes, she has this three cycle motorbike. You know what it's all about, right? Not two cycles, but three cycles. She is married to also a, um, a defable man. Uh, 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 well, during uh, in their daily conversation, they seem to be uh, match for each other. But one day after our meeting, this is this happens in a small town in uh, Central Java. It was heavy raining, and when she went back to her home uh, after that meeting, her motorbike slipped into a uh, mud because also it is a heavy raining. But what happened? This is so sad. Uh, she did not. After she managed to uh, apart to 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 get up and then uh, uh, try again with her uh, three cycle motorbike, she's not. Uh, she was not going back to her home. She went to her friends who is close by her house to clean up herself from the mud. And did, uh, this is uh, uh, did, she did that because she doesn't want she didn't want her husband to know that she is fall into accident because if that's so then her husband would say no you cannot go outside anymore you don't go to any meetings no more so in this very private sphere with an intimate partner with husband, even a, a safe space is not a only physical, but it's in mind. Uh, so even with the, in, with the intention that this husband wants to protect her wife, but then uh, it means that she's, he stopped the opportunity for her to know more, to widen her horizon and whatnot by uh, empowering herself into meetings and uh, organizing uh, women with disabilities. That's one. So safe space is really complex and also deep, yeah? It's not only physical like that. And the second one, I would say uh, regarding my, my work in Central Java about the forum that we, uh, we have in Indonesia, we have uh, 
Develop, planning Development Forum. It's called Musyawarah Perencanaan Pembangunan or Musrenbang. Maybe uh, Ika and the interpreter will uh, uh, interpret that for you. It's it's uh, it's been in the very local level into uh, there uh, in the national level. So the. Uh, I mean, it's not only the, 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 if the safe space is, doesn't exist, it's not only because of individual act or individual mind, but it is in the system. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, the system, which is very much patriarchal, for example, in Indonesia, in the family card, we call it Kartu Keluarga as the, as the core of our ID card. It's always uh, written that the head of a family or kepala keluarga is a husband, is a man. Uh, it means that in, uh, in any meetings, even in the rural and the very small local areas, those who get invitation for the forum of planning development or development planning is the kepala keluarga, is the head of the family. It's been there since ages. It's the culture, it's the social. So women will never take, uh, will never get the chance, even the development uh, usually uh, about it has to touch the education the health problems that is always a happen to and felt by women so even to break up that um, planning development forum has to be attended by women we have to do lots of things systematically to to the policies yeah not only uh, uh, to speak to individual or the leader or something but to the policies and that is to break the patriarchy as as uh, apa, as that, that is very subtle and it's in their mind uh, it's hegemonically accepted by women oh no it's a man business we don't uh, we don't take part of it and you know of course the interest of women of health and education is hardly being a, a good plan in the development yeah so that's that's uh, we we can uh, uh, we can say uh, no more that <laughs> I mean so important but it is so complex and subtle that really we have to be very careful with that. Thank you. Um, thank you, Myra, for uh, thank you, Chang and Myra, no, for sharing. But uh, if uh, maybe for the viewers. Uh, we would see that in the experiences from Rutra to Judy, Chang, and Mira, you would, we would see that when we speak of safe spaces or spaces, we're not just talking of physical. Uh, we've crossed, I think uh, it was also highlighted that when we speak of spaces, we're also talking of virtual space, although I think no, no one yet no, had surfaced. Uh, uh, surface actually the online spaces, but it also includes uh, online spaces. But I, I actually like how we, we try to traverse you know, from physical to mental and how spaces or how patriarchy also try to invade also our practices and eventually how practices eventually of what's supposed to be a safe space become an institutionalized one. No? And, we would, and we would see that safe spaces is not just an issue of a 20-year-old uh, woman or, or activist like Rutra. It's also an issue of Myra. It's also an issue of Judy and issue of Chang. We would see that in their experiences, it just, um, it, it, it becomes a little bit maybe different as you, as, as you become younger. <laughs> Am I correct? As we become younger and young. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I think um, it would appear that a safe space or our struggle to claim for a space that is safe will, will really take a long while. No? It, it, it's not something that will be offered to us. And I think that's what I'm, I'm getting. No? I'm getting from, from all of you. No? So maybe Shaira and Ika, would you like to say something? No? Uh, so I think we're, we're getting more, uh, our, our topic is getting more interesting because we're, we thought that we would just be talking of spaces here no, that we shared 
in, uh, to our family, but we're also talk, talking about how spaces, unsafe spaces, is being also institutionalized no? by governments and even by uh, patriarchal beliefs, or brought about by patriarchal beliefs. Shaira, Ika? Yeah. Uh, Ika, uh, you want to go first? Uh, you Any Shaira? additions? Hmm. Yeah. Ah, sorry. I, I, yeah, I don't have uh, any addition, but uh, maybe Shahira, you can. Yeah. You uh, addition. Just to add to that, um, I think it's a very not just um special experiences or unique experiences. It's common not uh for many women, maybe not all of us, but many of us. That's why we have um whenever you see a post on the in on the internet or on social media that um. Uh, relates or you can relate to it's for me it's um it's an emotional experience to see something that has happened to me as well or I've experienced as well because um it's freeing in a way to know that I wasn't the only one to have experienced uh, being violated or my space being violated or uh, feeling a certain way so um I think uh, we've also emphasized from the previous episodes that um, having this kind of space um, as uh, like this, uh, as small as this space is, or um, we're not global yet, we hope to be, or uh, we hope to have more audiences watch us and learn from our discussions. But um, a safe space like this is important or a space like this is important not just for us but for many women who can relate as well so i hope we can we are in a way providing them uh that comfort that um that safety that security even for um a short time uh that we're doing this uh, everyday feminism and i think that's the essence of why we're doing this as well um, Shire, if I may just, mm. I think um, I would be interested no, to know how our guests actually try to claim back or take back, if that's the correct word. I'm not sure if, if you would agree that you're trying to take back. You might have a different word. Um, uh, as, as private, as, as Chang said, as, uh, even in our home, own homes. No? So I think uh, most of our viewers uh, would, would like to agree with what we're saying, no? like what Nikki said. No? Agree with it being institutionalized starts with the basic institution in society, which mm -hmm. is the family. So maybe we, we, can, uh, no, we can ask our panelists or our guests to also share with us how they were able to take back or to claim or to demand for that safe space now how were they able to do it now maybe we would also learn from from their experiences so who uh whoever wants to go first uh, maybe, yeah yes uh yeah um maybe there i can give two examples uh one is um one time i was cut called by uh you know by a driver so what I, I went after him, like I literally ran after the car and knocked on the window and, and told him, why are you calling me? Um, or uh, that's, that's harassment. And what I did was uh, really I went to the police station to report uh, that's one. Second was uh, because, uh, of course, we want to be comfortable with how we, uh, you know, with our clothes or what we wear. So I usually also receive even when I'm riding a bike or just you know uh, in in, a, in even among people I know not necessarily close friends but also including close friends and when they make certain comments that I'm not comfortable I really make it a point thing um, I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it mm. actually helps me. Um, because uh, I live with um, PTSD because of um, the sexual assault that I've experienced, not only one. So I have PTSD, I have anxiety, I have major depression, so I have a mental health um, condition. So what I do is really try to always uh, claim and fight for my safe space. So, mm. so one is really making it a point to call out anyone. So for example, I when somebody just even um Jillian mentioned digital space so it's just yeah. for instance uh an instant message in messenger or in the philippines viber is commonly used and they would say that you know um uh something like 
picturing me in a in a in a way that is sexual and i would say that you know what that is harassment i don't feel comfortable so i will block you i will step away from this conversation so you know it's also making that statement because in a way when you make that statement like me running after the the car driver or me telling someone that someone is even older he's an older person and he's someone that i thought was a fatherly figure for me but you know what don't ever ever think that the only way to be respectful to elderly is just to take in even if what they're saying is um you know is is harassing you or it makes you feel uncomfortable mm-hmm. If they're, they're, they're your own father or older brother or any older relative or anybody in authority, always try to make it a point to call them out uh, because that's also a way to, well, you don't ha- have to do it for them. You have to do it for yourself. But for others, they will tell you that, okay, thank you. I'm learning. Uh, thank you for educating me. But again, do it for yourself. So that's two of the examples I can share. Uh, thank you, Chang. I think uh, our viewers were able to get, have a glimpse no, um, of what we can do. Of course, um, I think one major point that we've got is we don't let it off. No, We don't shrug it off. We, we try as much as possible to address it. But of course, not everybody could do that. I mean, it, it will take a lot of courage, really, for the woman or for the so-called victim survivor to really call the attention of the perpetrator. No? So thank you, Chang, for sharing your story and for being strong, for being strong for all of us and for all the victims. Um, um, maybe Judy, Judy has a different story. I remember, Judy, your story of being dominated by men and your voice being silenced or you being not included. So uh, how you shared actually about um, you tried your best, but maybe you can you can be more specific how you were able to really uh, show with those um, uh, male colleagues uh, how uh, that your voice is important in that business meeting or yeah thanks Jelen uh, basically I just kept doing it I mean when when somebody says that hey that's enough you know so just like what Shara has said um, you, you get cut off but I know that this is my time to speak I speak, you know, so I would tell them in the first place, I was elected to be in this position. So I'm doing my best to serve this position. So this is my opinion. And I think everybody needs to hear my opinion. So, so far, whatever I have said has been in the minutes, you know, so it has been included in the minutes, but it's a matter of really putting that straight face and telling them that, no, I also matter regardless of my gender as a woman, I also matter and my opinion also matters. So, so that, that is something that um, will take a lot of courage and, ex- and experience. And, and you need to also be, um, you need to believe in yourself that you can do it, you know? So you cannot easily be intimidated, all right? So the other thing, Jelen, is I really want to share that uh, my other experience is that the, 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 um, the putting down or you know something that could be sometimes condescending uh, is not only done by male but also by the female you know so we need to always like um, remember that uh, it's not only the male part but the, the the female also do that so it's a reminder for us to to make sure that we don't do that you know so we we need to create a space wherein what we want to be done to us in that space we should what we do not want others to do to us in that space, we, we refrain from doing that, you know, so we only think of positivity, we only think of a space for respect, you know, so uh, we and we need to maintain that space. If there are some people who are not following rules, you know, and they have a different agenda, then maybe we can gently remind them that this space is not for them. They need to create their own space where in whatever they want to do is accepted there, but it's not acceptable in this space that we have created. So I think that that's what I would like to emphasize. Uh, thank you, Judy. Um, I think uh, it captures actually that um, it's not just really um, men that we need to be, we need to watch or um, we need to be careful, but also us, no? As even yes. us as feminists or even as activists, we might be reproducing, mm. you know, uh, these kind of values, no, or beliefs. Right. Uh, Myra, uh, sorry, Mira. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, Mira. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, what can we do? Yeah, to take back. Uh, I I will differentiate that into different level. Personally, we have to. Uh, we can do some assertive training, uh, self awareness training to gain the self esteem. And uh, for this, I I would always I will always uh, ask everybody. Any, uh, every woman, even young women, to learn and to know and to respect their sexuality. It's very, very hard, but it's true. They refuse even to know their own body. Uh, if they know uh, uh, their sexuality, they can more uh, appreciate and respect how strong they are. Uh, and they are not as weak uh, as uh, always uh, uh, sad and perceived uh, of other people. That is in the personal or individual level, yeah? To train them, to educate them uh, with more uh, understanding fully, uh, to gain what I call is their sovereignty to her body, yeah? Body and soul, of course. Huh. But uh, even uh, we have to, uh, how do we take back uh, in the level, not, uh, uh, not uh, uh, personal things uh, by collective in the society. I am the one who always uh, cannot, uh, uh, cannot stop. How, how to say cerewet, uh, one P or, yeah, how to say cerewet. I hate all these, Male, all male panels, uh, whatever seminar and uh, webinar, whatever. I always say, hey, don't you know any women who can speak about that term? Uh, I always do that. Never, <laughs> never stop saying that to the committee, to those who know, because there is always a. You talk about women, you, uh, you talk about nationality, you talk about differences, you talk about whatever, and you left out women, there is no <laughs> things like that. So it's us who have to be very aware and be sensitive of it, and then uh, never stop uh, uh, to try to speak up, like what uh, Judy Chang uh, Rutra has been said. That's the way to speak up. Uh, don't keep yourself into silence and uh, uh, apart, close your mouth. That's uh, the thing, uh, Jalen, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Imba Mira. So um, that's also, it also relates to how we started defining safe spaces earlier, wherein we said it's not um, easy or um, easily given to us or automatically given to us, but earned. So that's why we're, um, we're continuing or we try to continue speaking up and asserting ourselves. So, um, Ruth, uh, yeah, so... Oh, your mic is on you. Yeah. Thanks again, uh, uh, Shira and uh, our colleague there. Um, so in my case, um, coming back to the question, how did I take back uh, the safe space for me? Uh, like everyone said here, your communication is your strong point. When you speak up, when you call out, you get the justice that uh, you, you at least try to get the justice uh, that you needed or the safe space, you, you can able to claim the safe space that you are looking for. This happens not just, you know, you are speaking out or, or you are calling out. This also happens because you are aware of the fact that, hey, this is harassment. This is um, not correct. You know, I have to speak up now. So the awareness comes with your um, uh, knowledge on that and also your, the, the position where you have, you can speak up. Uh, I think this is all uh, what our colleagues, even before the panelists uh, have said that they have been doing to claim back uh, the safe space that they wanted to. I would like to request, kindly request all our panelists here uh, to allow me to shed some light on the community who doesn't have anything that we have mentioned here. They don't have knowledge. They don't have the courage. They don't have the space. 
let me shed the light on 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 refugee women again and you know coming back to the safe space that they require you know refugee women uh although you know they have landed in a third world country or or, or a host country host nation their safety can be really elusive um you know um even seeking protection bring serious threats to their security to their freedom to their health due to various legal barriers cultural barriers language barriers especially in the case of um, you know non documented so the undocumented uh, migrants they couldn't step out of their home um, easily as we think since they have the legal issues that they have to face they are always staying in fear of you know the officials the authorities due to the undocumented status whereas the factors which made them undocumented remain to be you know uh, remain to be uh, clarified because it was not their own fault that they become undocumented there are a lot of associating factors which made them undocumented so in that case with those legal barriers they are also facing a lot of cultural barriers language barriers they don't have a trustworthy network of people where they can always seek help for apart from the civil societies who are engaging with them just just imagine those who don't have anybody around them and they don't speak the language of that particular country so it's even more worse and in some worst cases i've also seen that refugee women are not even aware of the concept gender e- equality since traditionally since they are young they have been instilled with certain cultures and norms which allows male dominations or gender violence gender based violence and also most of them are illiterate so the lack of literacy caused them to be less aware of the information and resources that could help them to prevent from such abuses and violence so let's think in this case what can we expect for the refugee women they don't have uh, the 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 um, space where they can go out and seek a legal um, protection they don't have a, a, a positive or a safe environment around themselves where they can seek help or they sometimes they are not even aware of anything that's happening which is related to gbv and in this case even evidence has shows that in terms of covid-19 where we are all facing a lot of lockdowns many refugee women uh, you know not just refugee women but women in general are facing a lot of um, um all forms of gbv the um uh, you know internal partner violence and so much on that and uh, they are also without uh, with having lockdowns they are not even contacting with the civil societies or angels that are helping them out so they feel a lot more isolated and have formed a lot of discrimination that's happening around them so in that case we really need to think of ways that are more inclusive to have marginalized community not just refugees but all sorts of marginalized community to take back to claim back the their safe spaces so in that case i think we we have a lot more um um interventions that's needed to do yeah. uh, to 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 create a better um safe space and inclusive space for all these people yeah that that's all shaira over to you Thank you for mentioning uh, actually Rukra. Thank you for sharing on that because uh, our actually actually our next segment will focus on um we'll be asking you about um the efforts to um give safe spaces or create safe spaces make spaces make safe spaces happen for women and girls. So um but before we go to that um last segment I think um we we can we want to go back to Chang uh to share on uh since it's pride uh it's june it's pride so uh chang yes yeah <laughs> happy pride everyone no i actually uh left 
a comment in the chat box about um, being in safe spaces. And we know that as feminists, we really strive to um, build and uh, create safe spaces for everyone. But uh, with uh, you know identifying myself as well as part of the LGBTIQ plus community, um, there are also some um, observations and even experiences uh, of some LGBTIQ uh, individuals who do not feel safe um, within the feminist spaces. Uh, uh, there's, what, there's what we call the uh, identity or gender erasure or uh, heteronormativity, uh, where uh, sometimes feminists would also uh, perhaps unconsciously uh, question the identities of women, such as, for example, trans women as uh, women, uh, and therefore being part of the feminist or the women's movement as well. So there have been some contentions in this area about um, trans women, even um, trans men, and uh, even, you know, um, women who are non-binary or who do not necessarily identify as as either, uh, you know, any of the uh, gender identity, whether uh, female or male. So um, also when we talk about safe spaces, we also have to talk about being inclusive, inclusive and being also uh, uh, in cognizance of the different um, expressions and uh, identities. So that's also a way for me to just uh, uh, greet everyone a happy pride because this is uh, June is a pride month. Thank you, Shai. Thank you, Chang. And yeah, um, as Chang has said, um, safe spaces as important it, as it is for women and girls, it's also um, equally important or uh, important for um, our LGBTQI uh, brothers and sisters as well. So um, I hope that if you're watching this right now, uh, again and again, um, not just women and girls, but everyone, uh, I hope that this is a safe space for you. And um, you can share your experiences here with us through comments on Facebook Live. So, um, with that, Kahira? yeah, yeah, go uh, ahead, Ika. Uh, I think before we uh, move on to the mm -hmm. next segment, uh, so join, uh, joining with us uh, is Sasha. Uh, Sasha is uh, one of the participants of Kalyanamita's Feminist Learning. Mm -hmm. She will give a brief sharing, maybe just uh, one minute, related to safe space and how it is important to her. Sasha, are you here? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, she's here. Go ahead, Sasha. Okay. Sasha, please. Halo semuanya, selamat siang. Uh, sebelumnya, uh, maaf aku akan berbicara dengan bahasa. Karena kemampuan bahasa Inggris itu masih tidak terlalu lancar untuk meminimalisir. Untuk meminimalisir kesalahpahaman dari interpretasi bahasa saya, jadi saya akan menggunakan bahasa Indonesia saja. Sebelumnya perkenalkan, nama saya Kata, saya adalah... Sebelumnya saya menyimak dengan baik eh, diskusi yang terjadi di forum ini. Terima kasih banyak untuk para narasumber atas eh, insight barunya. Eh, saya juga setuju eh, atas eh, banyak hal yang disampaikan oleh para narasumber, termasuk eh, eh, judi. Eh, terima kasih banyak insight-nya. Eh, saya benar-benar setuju bahwa eh, ruang aman itu adalah hal yang penting untuk kita usahakan bersama-sama gitu bukan hanya uh, untuk perempuan saja tapi untuk semua uh, gender yang ada gitu dan um, menurut saya uh, ruang aman itu adalah uh, ruang yang dibentuk secara bersama-sama juga jadi harus ada kesepakatan di antara lingkup yang uh, ada di dalam uh, ruang tersebut gitu dan um, saat orang-orang uh, yang ada di dalam lingkup uh, dari ruang tersebut tidak setuju untuk sama-sama membentuk ruang yang aman, maka tidak akan terjadi ruang aman tersebut. Uh, saya punya salah satu contoh. Uh, uh, saya pernah ada di dalam satu lingkup uh, kecil, uh, itu lingkup satu kolektif 
gitu. Jadi uh, di kolektif ini kami uh, mengorganisir uh, uh, masyarakat yang uh, mengalami penggusuran di salah satu uh, salah satu daerah di Jakarta dan uh, di saat itu kami juga bersama dengan kolektif-kolektif yang lainnya. Beberapa dari uh, orang-orang yang ada dalam kolektif kami merasa bahwa uh, ruang yang ada di sana itu ruang yang uh, tidak aman dan tidak nyaman untuk kami berkembang dan berproses, maka akhirnya kami memutuskan untuk e, menarik diri dari lingkup tersebut dan membuat ruang kecil yang lebih aman untuk kami. Ruang aman itu e, juga terbentuk atas dasar, e, pertama tadi kesepakatan, dan kami juga merasa bahwa e, keterbukaan adalah salah satu bentuk untuk e, untuk dapat menunjang dari uh, menunjang terbentuknya ruang aman itu. Jadi pada saat kami membentuk lingkup baru di luar dari uh, lingkup yang uh, toksik ini, kami akan tentang uh, hal-hal yang memang membuat kami tidak nyaman di sana. Kami terbuka satu sama lain dan membentuk uh, satu kesepakatan untuk sama-sama menciptakan ruang yang aman untuk kami bersama-sama. Gitu. Itu salah satu pengalaman yang saya dapatkan di uh, hal-hal yang saya kerjakan selama itu. Oke, okay, thank you, Sasha. Thank yes, you. Please. Uh, Anti, will translate or? Uh, Anti, will translate or? Yes, 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 please translate. Maybe we can have Anti on the main, ano, on the main mic. Maybe we can have Anki on the main. I speak now. My name is Sasha. I'm one of the participants of the uh, learning of feminism that uh, already been being conducted by Kalyana Mitra. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yes. Go ahead, Anki. Uh, for our guests, you can switch to interpretation in English. No need to, no need to switch now. Okay, so uh, Shasa... Uh, she is agree with all guest points. So uh, she agree that safe space is uh, important things to create all together. So she gives uh, like uh, an examples uh, about her uh, collective works that is uh, not provide the safe space uh, for her and also for her groups. So uh, to to have another option, she she. So she creating another new space, uh, which is safe and comfortable for her and for her uh, circle to share and also to maybe to talk uh, anything. And also the important the important things that uh, Shasha and her circle uh, to do is uh, setting the ground rules. So uh, so uh, they they can uh, like uh, have a. A new space that's safe and um, and and comfortable for all. I think that's the point uh, that Sasha shared before, if I not miss. But yeah, uh, thank you, Sasha, for uh, sharing. So, uh, Shahira, maybe we can uh, proceed to the next segment. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, Sasha. Um, I hope uh, we were able to capture your uh, your sharing. And um, so, uh, given that, we, we will be proceeding to, to our uh, last segment. So, am I, am I right? So, let me just check. Yeah, for our last segment. So, making spaces safe. Um, so, you've, uh, you've shared, you've all shared about how, how you've made efforts on making or demanding back or taking back the spaces that were taken away from you, from calling out to um, sharing your learnings to with other women and um, you know just continuously making efforts varied ways of efforts to assert ourselves as women and as girls to claim that space that's rightfully ours now 
Um, our question is, um, I guess uh, it relates to what uh, someone also said earlier that the effort should or the burden should not be on just us, but most importantly, the government. So um, I guess what can we do more to protect girls and women from harm and harassment aside from our efforts? And then um, if there are initiatives being done, um, so uh, ho, ho, ho. wait, <laughs> I, I thought Jen was talking to me, sorry. Okay, so um, let me just uh, repeat that. So what are we doing or what can we do to protect girls and women from harm and harassment uh, from chauvinist men or even women? And are there initiatives being done or being carried out by uh, in your national or local level? So uh, this time we'll start with um, Shang again. So that's the order. <laughs> yeah, so just not to cause any more confusion. So Chang. Yes, um, can I just quickly respond to the question um, posted in Facebook as well about naming um, those uh, offenders or perpetrators or harassers? There are consequences, legal even, um, if you name, uh, you know, someone. So make sure not to name them. That's my advice because... Uh, um, there are legal consequences like you can be charged with uh, defamation or even libel. So let's go with that. Um, so this is my quick question, a quick answer to that question. Um, so, so, and that leads me to uh, my answer to the final um, segment about uh, what we can do. Uh, Shai, I have to admit I'm not comfortable with the um uh the statement or with the approach of protecting women because mm. women are inherently empowered they have the agency to protect themselves uh but yes we need protective mechanisms and that's different protective mechanisms and redress mechanisms so uh we have to uh i think first is uh there should be a recognition that women are not uh, like, you know, uh, we have to challenge that uh, perspective or that stereotype that women are weak or they have to be protected, especially by men or, you know, that that um, that myth of dancer in distress or knight in shining armor. We can be our own heroes or heroines. Um, so what we can do is make sure institutionally that we have um, policies in place and these policies are enforced and make sure that these policies are informed by women's stories and women's narratives we have to make sure that uh, uh all uh you know for example in the philippines we have the safe spaces act or the bowel basis law that we have a participatory process wherein women are represented in uh, pol policy making and even in law enforcement uh we have to make sure that uh the there's uh, an environment uh for that the safe space is in fact um, how the public, the law enforcement, uh, you know, the, the whole community treat women with respect and um, also as equals to men or to any other individuals. Uh, so uh, we, I want to promote also and mention uh, the program I'm handling. It's uh, safe and fair. It's actually a, uh, a program on uh, realizing women migrant workers' rights and opportunities in the ASEAN region. Uh, and we are um, promoting, uh, when we talk about safety, uh, women to be able to, like everyone uh, shared earlier, feel safe to uh, get support, to seek help without judgment, without fear of stigma and shame, and that um, they will not uh, experience re-victimization. So we need to have uh, really uh, good laws or good policies with uh, gender-sensitive um, state actors to implement them and getting the whole of uh, society, the whole community involved no, to uh, create that safe space for women. Stop victim blaming. And um, so I already mentioned the initiatives, but we also have what we call uh, the campaign, Babaeng Biahiro. Babae means woman. Biahe journey or voyage and then hero. So it's women voyager heroes. It's a local campaign of the safe and fair. And it's really one of the initiatives we're quite proud of. Uh, 
we uh, we provide helplines uh, for women to report their cases and also referral. The same with what WLB and Taliana Mitra is doing. So uh, let's make sure that this information, it's really crucial that, uh, yes, there are services available, but information about these services should reach the women and girls and um, the communities. So thank you, Shai and uh, Ika. Thank you, Chang. So uh, for those who want to um, know more about uh, the programs that Chang has shared, you can always message us uh, or um, yeah, we can share it later on. So uh, information, of course, the access to those services and the programs that are available and um, maybe even uh, the, uh, what's this, uh, how we receive the information or the reports shared to us are, are also important. So um, next, let's call on Judy. So just to refresh, um, what can we do? So thank you, Chang, for correcting no, the, the question. Uh, so I guess, what can we do to um, prevent uh, harm and harassment for towards women and girls? And um, if there are any initiatives being done or carried out at your no local and national level? Thank you, Shara. Um, so basically, the, the thing that I would like to really to share in, in responding to this question is that prevention is the first line of defense from all forms of harm and harassment. And the only way for us to prevent that is for us to be able to access information and also Knowledge sharing is very powerful. So if we women who knows exactly what are the laws in place on in terms of harassment and how to access um, justice for that, we need to um, help in terms of disseminating this information in various forms um, and in various media, uh, whether it's offline or online platform. So we need to continue to educate, engage women and empower them. You know, and um, Chang has really summarized a lot of these things. And I just want to emphasize that we go back again to knowledge sharing. What we're doing now actually is part of that. You know, as we create more space like this where we can share each other's challenges and how we do things here in our own country, we have a lot of similarities and a lot of um, collective uh, ideas that we can share with each other. This is, um, something that we need to sustain and continue. And what initiatives have we done so far? For example, in Brunei, what I would like to share that with the advent of um, social media, um, here in Brunei, there are many self-organized groups created by young women via online community. And these groups try to reach out to women and girls out there, wherein they try to help other women in the area of mental health issues and this has escalated during the COVID-19 um, pandemic last year. And then there are specific online community that of, of young women that help other women who are experiencing depression, anxiety, you know, stress-related matters, um, anything to do with their personal life, you know, anything that is psychological in nature, uh, mental, emotional well-being, all these things um, has proliferated in the online community, because that's the only way we're in the young people here in Brunei can easily access. They have their Instagram, they have their Facebook. There's a WhatsApp community going on, supporting each other. So this is kind of phenomena that we have observed happening nowadays in Brunei. And it is really something positive uh, in the community. And also there's a lot of groups of women focusing now on social enterprise. And especially for those who would like to um, you know, attain gainful self-employment, uh, financial empowerment for women. Um, we are looking into entrepreneurships and all this. So I, I'm talking about the financial empowerment of women. And this is also a safe space for them to share each other's um, experiences in terms of how can we empower ourselves to become financially independent, you know. So this has a lot of things to do in terms of um, uh, addressing a lot of their issues and concerns, you know, um, and this is something that is uh, proliferating in the uh, online community in, in Brunei. It is really something that we are proud to look into, that we have um, 
come in a time wherein we have leverage on the uh, online community to spread out the word out there that there are certain spaces, safe spaces for women and girls to join in and be a part of it and feel respected, protected and learn from it. So the online community uh, networking is quite uh, strong here in, in, in Brunei. And I think this is one initiative that needs to be encouraged and needs to be supported. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Um, I just I want to read uh, what Chang, in addition to what Judy has uh, shared, um, Chang has uh, also shared on on the chat. So I think it's uh, it uh, what's this? It forms the entire message as a whole. So uh, Chang shared on the chat that we also need to promote the message that being strong does not mean we just keep it to ourselves or not needing any help and. Um, in the forms of these services, these programs available or the support uh, groups that are available, whether online or uh, like Judy said, in social media. And in the Philippines, we also had that last year, the IAKO movement, uh, wherein um, one by one or little by little, girls were coming out with their own stories. And um, even the physical groups or uh, the circles that we have in uh we when we share with them, um, when we, we make ourselves vulnerable, that that's also a sign of our strength. So, um, if you need a shoulder to cry on, you know, and that was also shared in a previous episode, wherein um, we have the safe spaces, the social circles, uh, that will accept us when we're not, uh, when we don't feel strong, or when we just want to cry, or be angry, or um, lose composure every once in a while. So uh, thank you, Judy and Sham, uh, for sharing those things. Um, next, uh, let's, okay, yeah, okay. Before we call Mira, I would just like to have a shout out to mm -hmm. those who are watching. Hello to um, Ian. Uh, Ian is saying hi to you, Chang. Um, and then hi, Russell also, and to Mabel. So they're all watching and saying hello to all of you, all of you. So. Uh, sorry, sorry for cutting you, Shai. Uh, now maybe we can call on Mira now. Thank you. Yes, all right. Uh, I agree and emphasize what other speakers have said. Uh, knowledge sharing is very important, and then empowering uh, girls uh, and young women is the most uh, is the basic strategy to combat this uh, uh, for a safe space. Uh, uh, I, I also would like to, to comment on the question uh, launched by Anya about the online name uh, shaming. Uh, basically, the strategy uh, to, to, uh, uh, to fight for this uh, sexual harasser is to make it public because uh, they want uh, their action and the behavior to keep in silent, to keep in a very, uh, let's say, uh, to put it under the rack, let, uh, uh, so the guests will not see it. So we uh, we have to be able and brave enough to uh, let uh, everybody has said that to speak up, to publicly uh, announce and make it uh, the public knows what happened actually. Of course, we have the uh, we have the uh more uh, and uh, uh clever strategy not to mention the full name or things like that yeah uh, uh in uh, in the virtual things that uh, apa, uh apa, that we uh, cannot like what uh, Chang is said uh, by the law. Uh, so there's so many uh, strategy and tactics for that but basically you have to make it public because private sphere is always the, the, the safe place to, to, to harass women, to, to uh, uh, jeopardizing women and all that. Yeah. And then even and this will uh, this reminds me of my own experiences in in uh, back then uh, when I uh, studied in the Hague together with Luz. I uh, I stay at the dormitory uh, in uh, the Hague, 
and there are so many uh, apa, uh, my colleague student from where, uh, uh, countries and one day uh, there is a man i should uh, mention the he, he had he passed away already but it is a fact so i will uh, uh, tell the fact uh, uh, he's from uh, uh, Africa, one country in Africa. When we are in the get uh, uh, in the beginning, um, our uh, our what do you call that? Uh, convener always uh, tells us, please Asian uh, girls, Asian women, Asian girls, be careful because I know you are all like to smile. And you are so uh, warm towards uh, 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 towards others, and that could uh, be interpreted uh, interpret wrongly <laughs> and abusively by others. So uh, in the dormitory one night, it, it was Saturday evening, and then I uh, I get a call. I got a call. Then and the telephone at that time it was in eighty nine yeah eighty nine so there is no <laughs> SMS or uh, uh, telecommunication uh, handphones like these days. Uh, I went around to receive my call and I watched him. Uh, I saw him watching television in the common room. And then well uh, after finishing my call, he followed me. Yeah, in my back. And then uh, when I reached my room, uh, he said, oh, you are new in this dorm. Uh, don't you want to invite me as a courtesy friend? Oh my God, what should I do? My my auntie is uh, getting is warning me. Oh no. Oh, oh okay. It, it has to be. But I'm sorry, I have nothing to invite you. I have nothing in my fridge. I have nothing. So next time with other people, we can do we can do this together in the common room. I said so, eh? with uh, uh, briefly and very sure. But then he, oh, but I saw uh, your lamp is uh, broken or something, and he pushed me into my room. Yeah, and then uh, of course I said no, no, you you have to get out, you have to get out. And suddenly he grabbed me from backside, said like that, oh, you are so beautiful, blah blah blah, uh, by this man. And then, but somehow I was able to push him back and then uh, push him out of my room. What what I did at that time, I uh, directly went into uh, other uh, friends, which is. Uh, unfortunately, there was a weekend, so nobody uh, uh, were in the dormitory. Everybody has gone out. Uh, but there is an, some my Indian friend uh, uh, from India. I told her directly what happened. And we agreed to, okay, tomorrow we uh, meet him and ask him what he did. And then, uh, yes, three of us started with my senior, more senior friends in the dormitory, my Indian friend. Hey, what did you do to Mira? Eh? What did I do? I'm a family man. I did nothing. See, in the, con in the confrontation like that, uh, the perpetrator, the, the actor uh, uh, the, of harasser and violent uh, could see still uh, that he he believes that he can still what do you call that uh, uh, silent uh, 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 the women the the victim is very sure he can silent that so trying uh, telling you this meaning to say silent is uh, toxic <laughs> silent is what silent is not golden as we are told uh, from uh, all the generation you keep silent and it's golden no it's not so speak out call out uh, it should be a your strength and your um, uh, your strategy to let other people know to get support otherwise uh, even uh, what do you say uh, all male colleagues will keep silent when they know their friend is harassing others the same activists for example 
yeah it's it's very subtle eh? it's very uh, fine if you do not go into a uh, deep uh, connection and then uh, uh, empowering girls and women should should go into a uh, deeper and more uh, subtle things, not only the, the, the physical, the, what you call the kasat mata, with, uh, the unseen things, the unspoken things. Yeah. So, okay, some initiative, uh, oh yeah, I, I will tell you. Some initiative is the same with others, create more safe space for women, meaning uh, even that's a very small, like uh, 15, 20 uh, young girls get together virtually and talk about more intimate and a very, uh, what do you call that, a very sensitive issues together. Just two days ago, my young colleagues from University of uh, Gajah Mada in Yogyakarta, she's very bright, she's scholar uh, to get her PhD, but now she is traumatized by the culture. In Indonesia, it's very uh, masrooming of the fundamentalist and intolerance uh, activists. They urge and they push young women in the university to get married as soon as possible. Yeah, as, as young, as early as possible, as early as possible. And it, it will go through, I don't know if Judy is aware of this, uh, go what they call as ta'aruf. So you don't need to know and to uh, get to know a good thing, good or better with the spouse, but then uh, they will like mix, uh, mix, mix met you and then uh, they uh, decided on the uh, marriage or wedding day. That's it. That, that's what called the arm. It's very common now being campaigned and uh, pushed by the group of uh, fundamentalism and intolerance group. So this girl uh, asked me what do I do because I don't I, I don't see uh, marriage is important for now for now is my uh, my career my work my job and also my of course my dissertation and then I asked no it's okay now let's call other people let's talk about whether marriage is a choice yeah let's talk about it it's a very sensitive issue so whenever there is issues uh, that uh, being uh, spoken out by a girl we as an older one have to catch them and uh, uh, provide them with some space a safe space for them discuss it and ask it's very easy to, to find uh, women activists who, who are not uh, married and they are happy and they are not bitch <laughs> uh, uh, in life. So just to provide choices that being single is also okay. Stuff like that, yeah. They're, they're, or just organize, educate, knowledge sharing. It's, that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you, Mba Mira, for uh for your sharing and also your uh opening up opening up on those uh on what you experienced um so many years back. So um I guess uh we can I, I want to go to uh Ruthra this time or let's go for Ruthra. Um just to refresh. So um what can we do to prevent harm and harassment against girls and women, and if there, there are any initiatives being carried out on your local and national level. Thank you so much for the question, Shaira. Um, so um, I would like to um, repeat uh, all those you know, good points given by our panelists just now, you know, um, educating and also um, uh, knowledge sharing, arranging for small safe space sessions, you know. But um, in my case, uh, since we are dealing with uh, um, a, a set of uh, women who are, uh, you know, um, we, we can't uh, have the general um, interventions that we used to have with all the young women that we have been uh, doing uh, for, for the refugees 
case, I think uh, the intervention should be more um, specific and also more sensitive. So um, in that case, I think if uh, we are going to talk about how are we going to prevent the sexual harassment or harm uh, to refugee women and girls, I think uh, as, as our panelist says, knowledge sharing, knowledge building is very much important. And this can be done within the refugee community through you know, arranging for awareness campaigns. You know, this campaign should target all the, um, all the members of the population, not just the women, but also the men, uh, children, you know, all, all intersectionalities. And men should be involved in peer counseling and awareness raising can help influence traditional you know, attitudes towards victims and survivors, help um, develop community-based security systems that both respond to, um, to and prevent sexual gender-based violence, and can also help the other men to understand how such violence you know, hurts not just the women in his home, but also the entire community and also um, maintaining and uh, strengthening existing social support networks. It's very much important at this point of time, um, support the role of women as equal decision makers and community leaders. Female uh, community leaders have played a, a critical role in encouraging victims and survivors to come forward and seek assistance. And here the female community leaders, I would uh, like to, uh, say that you know this female community leaders doesn't have to be uh, necessarily the, the people outside from the refugee community we can find female community leaders from the refugee community itself and it is more effective in that sense because you know we are trying to get someone from the community that they are used to and we are using them as a role model to show that you know uh, this is how we can um, prevent gender based violence this is how we can create safe spaces it will create more trust and more confidence among the uh, targeted beneficiaries. And you know, when they are trained as awareness campaign promoters or peer counsel counselors, female community leaders ensures that um, gender issues, you know, like I say, like sexual or gender-based violence are raised and examined. And um, apart from that, the other solutions that we can see into, we can take up is providing safe shelters and immediate emergency assistance to victims and supporters, uh, sorry, victims and survivors. You know, we can escort the victims and support. Uh, I have my mentors who have been you know, escorting victims and survivors to seek social, medical, and legal assistance since uh, they couldn't, you know, go to that specific places by themselves due to the barriers that have that that's been here the structural barriers that have been here and also ensure that the safety of the victims and survivors uh their families and the communities respond and also response activities should also be uh targeted at perpetrators this is also very much important victims and survivors of domestic violence or gender-based violence will most often to choose to remain uh, silent, uh, you know, or remain with the perpetrator for economic reasons. So if the perpetrator is not helped, he's likely to continue abusing. So that should be, you know, coordinate within the refugee community and also with other actors to promote effective prevention and response activities. And uh, lastly, it's like to advocate, it's very much important to advocate to involve refugees in deciding what services should be provided at what location, by whom, and in what languages. You know, mostly services can be provided in drop-in centers, women's centers, community or youth centers, or other locations where victims and survivors feel comfortable enough to report the incidents. And the services that the location provided uh, should maintain its confidentiality and the dignity of the victims and um, advocate for the rights of victims and survivors and for the rights of women in general. Most post governments do not allow refugees to be involved in advocacies uh, for the change of law, you know, and things like that. There's a lot of limitations involved with uh, involving such communities, such women from such communities to involve in political activities or advocacies. So this limits the ability of refugees to form women's social movement to advocate on their behalf. So that's where 
um, civil societies, NGOs comes in, you know, establishing a link with NGOs and the host nation that are involved in advocacy enables the refugee population to benefit from um, public advocacy without violating the rules of the host country. And to uh, highlight on the responses that have been taken nationally, uh, we have our civil societies, NGOs, um, for continuously providing such um, services in a remote mode due to the lockdowns that we are facing uh, right now. So there are, uh, there are a lot of NGOs who are, you know, uh, tr has transitioned to fully remote modalities using phones and online platforms, uh, you know, and also in other cases, partners combined element of in-person in or remote support. And um, yeah, it includes setting up dedicated telephone numbers, helplines, or even, you know, um, there are integration information uh, there are uh, ways has been taken to integrate information and support on gender-based violence into a wider package of support. For example, when our civil societies distribute dignity and hygiene kits uh, to refugee communities, this is only not, um, you know, they, they also uh, use, um, how do I say, uh, they also uh, print out information about gender-based violence, you know, the helplines where they can pre, uh, reach for help, what they can do if they can, if they are facing such violences at home, how do they create their space spaces into their own languages and making it into pamphlets and also could, uh, distributing it while they are distributing their hygiene, the hygiene kits to the beneficiaries, especially to refugee women. So things like this helps a lot at this COVID-19 time. And the responses has been differ, has been very different uh, according to the needs and necessities of the com refugee communities in the respective places. So yeah, that's all from me. This is uh, are some points that I would like to share share about the solutions and what has been taken uh, into practice as of now. Thank you so much. Over to you, Shaira. Thank you, Ruthra. Um, and just, I, I, think we, I think we all share the same sentiments as Chang on the chat that um, thank you, Ruthra, for shedding light on the experiences and stories of the refugee women and displaced women that you are working with. And um, so, uh, I, of course, uh, thank you for sharing on the information on what programs and services are available. And I hope that uh, we're being watched on um, not just in the Philippines and Indonesia, but uh, in your countries as well. So, um, and that the women, women and girls have access to this kind of information there. So, um, Jalen, you, uh, you want to say something? So actually, no, but uh, since you called me, okay. So I think uh, we're already wrapping up, but I think what we, what the, our panelists highlighted is that um, there's, there's a need for us to fight back. No? Unfortunately, we need to fight back. Um, we are being intimidated so, uh, so that we will be silent. But we need to fight back. But again, I think it, it's also good that we need to join hands, join together, find those safe spaces. We, if there's not, if it's unsafe, we create those spaces. And I think what what our speakers highlighted is that um, there are actually uh, structures, no, available which uh, not necessarily should be done by NGOs or activists like us, but by governments. No? Uh, and those structures and mechanisms should be uh, something that we need to demand, we need to use and utilize so that, um, and maybe access, so that um, eventually um, we can actually also comment on in terms of the kind of services being provided by this uh, government agency. I think one important point that, that I got from, from what you've said before you make your final um, speech no, for all our guests is that we can change. No? We can change the, our, the space that we're in. We can change it. We can do something about it. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, government must protect uh, those spaces but as agents of change, women and girls as agents of change, we can do something to change it. And we can claim it as our space that values feminism. So that's my, uh, 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 my take no, on what uh, our, our panelists shared. Uh, I, Ika, that's, that's your cue. 
Yes, Saira. Uh, I think uh, since we have the limited time, so maybe we can uh, proceed to our closing yeah, for warm up. Uh, so the last question, maybe for the uh, guests, uh, maybe just uh, give a, like the short answer or maybe just like a closing statement about uh, if you have any advice for those who are watching us and are facing similar challenge or experience. Uh, so maybe you can share uh, what 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 advice uh, do you have uh, for our viewers? Yeah. How um, just to add to that, how how can we continue spreading the values of feminism in in our spaces so we can create um, a much safer place for women and girls? So short, uh, maybe uh, if you can give um, one sentence or a very short advice for whoever's watching us right now. Ah, sorry, I ha I'm going to... Okay, Judy, uh, please go first. Okay, uh, a short one. Um, let us continue and keep this conversation going. No? We should not only talk about this space because we are celebrating Women's Month or whatever celebration International Day we're talking about. It has to be done on a continuing basis. And we need to be visible. The only way for us to be visible is to keep the conversation going, isn't it? And on and with that, we need to think of inclusivity. Right? We cannot, um, uh, how do you call that? We cannot um, exclude other people who need also this space. We need to share the space and expand the space, right? So we need to keep ourselves visible. We need to keep the conversation going, and we need to think inclusivity when it comes to feminism all right so that that will be my take thank you okay thank you judy um but amira uh please Tanya. okay thank you just continue what judy has said it's very beauty beautifully said and the fight and the strife against all the this is just don't be afraid of subversive. We have to fight and uh, we create our own fashion. Be subversive, then it's okay. Thank you, Bamira. Uh, next, uh, Rutra. Um, uh, to continue to add on to what our panelists says, to me, I would say that if you believe that men and women should have equal rights and opportunity, if you stand for gender equality, then you are taking a feminist approach. So please help to, um, to a better gender equality community, and gender equality in our community, especially in the community who really needs that, who are in the verge of vulnerability. So I think violence prevention means also working together towards gender equality and essentially it is feminism in action. So that's all from me. Over to you, Ka. Yeah, thank you, Rudra. Check. Yes, I think um, the title of this episode already speaks for itself. Feminism is all about creating spaces. It's about um, making sure that we are not causing harm or we are not causing anyone to feel unsafe or, or at the very least, um, whether we are in the situation uh, where we witness um, situations that where someone is unsafe, we should do something about it. Uh, meaning that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have to think about the role that we play what kind of conversations are we having with our friends, with our family that would uh, perpetuate or that would um, cause harm or make women and girls feel unsafe? So uh, yes, indeed, um, let's continue creating more safe and just what Judy said, inclusive spaces. And let's rethink our, um, our uh, behaviors and um, and as well as, uh, be, you know, how we view ourselves. Um, it, I'm really a strong advocate of um, uh, 
challenging stigma and uh, stopping victim blaming. So let's always believe in ourselves as well. Thank you, Chang. Such a powerful closing statement yeah, from our guest. So uh, thank you. Uh, it's a great to hear uh, such an inspiring stories and experience uh, from uh, all of you. And it is very encouraging. So thank you and hope to see you again in another opportunity. So I'll show you. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Ika. And thank you to our guests for sharing not just their um, perspectives and insights, but also their personal experiences and stories. And um, that's why... Uh, the essence of everyday feminism is not just to um, change perspectives or try to change perspectives of those who are watching us or um, ex not expose but uh, share the experiences of women but also to create safe spaces not just for us but for many women and girls who uh, have yet to find their own safe space and I hope that um, for every one of us uh, women and girls um, that we have, we find our own safe space, whether within us, whether it's physical or um, not physical, I can find the word, but uh, that, and that we also be, be a safe space for other women and girls. And um, so, so there's so many good things here, but um, sadly, we have to come to an end. Um, and um, thank you to everyone, uh, our guests, Chang, Judy, Mba, Mira, Ruthra, uh, for your time and your insights. To everyone who watched us on Facebook, thank you for your uh, time and your comments. And I hope uh, we hope to see you all next week once again for another episode of our Everyday Feminism Way of Life. So, salamat. Terima kasih. Thank you. Please don't give yet. We have picture taking. <laughs> yeah.